Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to stand out on social media and be seen as the experts that they really are. The latest updates and trends from the social media space presented by me, your social media strategist and coach. Now, let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Socials. Today I have Jodine with me. She's also a social media coach, and today we'll be talking all things LinkedIn. So hello, Jodine. Welcome to the podcast. Let's get started with a little bit of an intro. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do. Cool. So I'm Jodine McIntyre, also known as Social Smarty, um, and I teach business owners and professionals how to show up confidently and consistently on social media. So similar to your role, I think we do, um, you know, very similar things. But I think in my instance, some things that are really important for me is uh, basically teaching my clients how to be consistent. So it's all about systems and processes and making things easy for them. Um, I think that, you know, there's sort of the the gold standard of social media. And then there's uh, where I come in, which is just getting it done and, and showing up and doing that in a way that's sustainable. Um, and yeah, that's what I love to focus on and really help loads of different business owners, all different business stages, all different industries. So I can't believe that I get to do this for a job. I just love what I do. I love that because I think we often see, you know, these Instagram gurus and they tell you to post 20 times a day and that's the only way to grow. And, you know, it's just not very sustainable for a small business. So I love your approach of saying, you know, just get it done, do what has to be done, but don't exaggerate and, and keep it realistic. Yeah. And I think like I often tell my clients that, you know, you can spend a lot of time trying to craft the perfect post, but if you never get around to actually hitting that share button, you're not going to reach anyone. So even just showing up, even if it's not perfect, you're still going to reach people with your message um, rather than spend time just stressing over that perfect post. So yeah, it's about getting out there, showing up um, and getting it done. Yes, that's what I preach as well, usually to my clients. Um, usually what I do in the beginning of a podcast is we usually just dive right into the questions, but I thought we could do something fun today. We could do a little game of bust the myth. I thought of a few common LinkedIn beliefs or yeah, maybe misconceptions that people usually have when they think about LinkedIn or things that I hear when I tell clients, oh, have you tried LinkedIn or, you know, those are the things that usually come up. So I would love for you to tell us if this is true or not, or maybe it's a maybe. And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about what we can expect from LinkedIn. So here goes. First one, LinkedIn is just for recruiters and job seekers. Yeah total myth so I think this harks back to when LinkedIn first rolled out which was like the early to mid 2000s and it was marketed as a kind of online resume or an online CV site where you could pop down all your details and recruiters could reach out to you but LinkedIn has come a heck of a long way since then so now it's all about um, making connections so if you think about any kind of professional connections and that could be an employer so absolutely you know I think it's 90% of recruiters do use LinkedIn it's probably higher than 90% um, so that is absolutely still true that if you are looking for work or if you're on the other side and you're looking for team members um, if you're growing your team yep perfect place but if you think about all the different types of connections that you would make in your professional life it could be connecting with people you want to collaborate with like you and I on this podcast it could be connecting with potential clients it could be con connecting with you know people in media PR all sorts of different connections so it's um, absolutely a total myth that it's just about recruitment. Funny that you say that because when I first came across LinkedIn that was in my university years and all of our professors would tell us you know like you have to be on LinkedIn because that's where employers are looking for you know new team members and like it's your online CV basically and we also were encouraged to make connections with all of our uh, yeah, study friends and I'm still connected with a lot of people that I met at university on LinkedIn and I don't even like have their email address or phone number 
number or something, but I know that they're on LinkedIn and I know that I can get in touch with them there. So I think um, it was definitely that a few years ago, but it, like you say, it has evolved into more of a social media platform as well, rather than just a, an online CV platform. Yeah, absolutely. And I do work with a lot of, I've been working with a lot of schools, so actually high school um, children. Um, and so getting them to understand that LinkedIn is a great place to start to build their own personal brand um, from a business perspective. But yeah, you're right. It, it, it is still great for finding a job, but there's so much more to LinkedIn. That brings me to my second question. LinkedIn is just for people working in corporate jobs. So small business owners can't really benefit from being on LinkedIn. Yeah, total myth. And I think that it comes back to that idea of um, B2B versus B2C. And a lot of my clients will think that LinkedIn is only, um, you know, worthwhile spending time on if you're in a B2B sort of business, if you're selling to other businesses. But the thing that I always remind them is that even if you are selling B2B, you're still selling to people. You know, there's still a person in the role within that business that's the decision maker, and lots of them are hanging out on LinkedIn so it's um, yeah it's an interesting one but the way that I see it is when you build up a profile on LinkedIn and you share content and you build up your connections and you can really position yourself as an authority within you know your industry or within your space so regardless of the type of product or, or service that you're selling you know you still want to be seen as the authority in that space you want to be seen as the person that knows what they're talking about um, and so LinkedIn is just such a good way to do that and I think that the thing we really need to remember is that LinkedIn ranks so highly in search results so if someone is doing their research before they work with you uh, and they're searching you out on Google, so they're typing your name and maybe your location into Google, one of those top search results is going to be your LinkedIn profile. So we have the ability to tell people what we want them to know about us before they reach out to us. So even if we do nothing on LinkedIn other than create a profile, at least keep that profile up to date and have all of the information you want people to know about you. Um, and I think that, you know, from a small business perspective, that's the absolute bare minimum is to have that presence knowing that it is likely to be the top search result when someone is looking to to do their research about you and we all google people you know we all do it before we meet with people or you know someone might say oh you need to talk to so and so the first thing we do is jump on google and do a bit of a stalk see what we can find so linkedin gives us the power uh, to make sure that people find what we want them to find mm, i love that i never really thought of that but yeah it's so true it does always show up at the top of the search results and i think it, it comes back to what you mentioned before. LinkedIn is not just about working with other people, but it could be also a networking thing. You know, if you go to a networking meeting and, you know, you give someone your business card and they look you up afterwards, then that is what is going to show up. And then it's important that how you have presented yourself in real life kind of also is reflected then on your LinkedIn profile. So that's just a way of, um, yeah, like you said before, establishing a personal brand and kind of showing that you really are the person that you say you are or that, you know, have the authority that, that you might have mentioned or hinted at um, in, a, in a different kind of context. I have another one for you. You need to post on LinkedIn every day to be successful just as much as you would on Instagram, you know, like show up every day. Is that true? Or can we also post a little bit less on LinkedIn? Yeah. So one of the metrics that I look at when I evaluate a social media platform is something that we call the, the half-life of content. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take for that piece of content or that thing that we post on social media to get half of the engagement that it's going to get or, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, when it dies off. And if we look at the different platforms, so Instagram and Facebook um, is a very, like the lifespan of social media content is very, very short. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine after 24 hours or 48 hours, that post is pretty much dead. It's not going to be yeah. pushed out um, in people's feeds, um, you know, it, or, 
even at all really I guess um, but if we look at LinkedIn then it's a little bit of a longer time frame so and you can have a look at this yourself so if you do a little scroll through your own LinkedIn feed you'll often see content there that is you know maybe three four even five days old so mm -hmm. what that tells us is that that life that um, content has a much longer lifespan on LinkedIn which if we flip that around means that you don't have to post as frequently so even if you're posting once a week over on LinkedIn chances are that post is still going to be seen for days after you've posted it um, so I think that's the first thing to mention is that yep we can ease back a little bit we don't have to show up daily <laughs> on LinkedIn um, the other thing that's really cool about LinkedIn is how um, amazing its search functionality is. So if you create a piece of content around a particular topic that you know everything about and you want to share your knowledge and again about positioning yourself as an authority in that space, that content can be found later through that search. So if someone's on there and they're wanting to do a search for a particular topic, then content is going to pop up in those search results. So um, yeah, I definitely think that there's a, a case to be made for just easing back in terms of how often you post on LinkedIn. Um, and lastly, I will add that out of all of the people who have LinkedIn accounts, it's a small fraction that are actually sharing content. The amount of lurkers or people that are there just for a scroll and just to have a look um, at what's going on is massive. So even if you post infrequently, you know, your reach is probably going to be higher on LinkedIn than it would on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, just because of that, the way that people use it, but because they're scrolling and not actually creating content themselves. Mm, totally agree. I often even see posts that are like two weeks old or something. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> that is a, a long life for a post <laughs> compared to other yeah. platforms. Yeah. Um, but I also have noticed that when you follow someone new or like when you connect with someone, that their posts are being played into your feed much more initially. I've also noticed this on Instagram, but much more on LinkedIn. So that again kind of gives your posts a longer life if you are good at constantly connecting with new people, you know, like getting spreading the word about yourself and getting people to connect with you, that means that your posts, even if they might have already expired on the normal feed of the people who have already followed you, it can still be played out to those new people, which is obviously great because clearly they have shown an interest in you because they have followed you or they've connected with you. So it's great that your content immediately gets shown to them because then they're like, oh, nice. Like This is actually what I wanted to see right now and they'll um, be more likely to engage. Um, but I think what you mentioned as well um, is really true about lots of lurkers on the platform. I know a lot of people who have a LinkedIn profile who will never write a single post, but that are like constantly liking and, you know, you see them around. Um, but they will never write an actual post. So that can be a big benefit for you if you actually do take the time to write um, your post. And we'll come back to what we should be posting on LinkedIn a little bit later. I wanted to ask you about that. But since we're talking about posts, I have one last myth for you. And that is LinkedIn is all about self-promotion and, you know, the kind of posts that are like, hey, I started a new job because I think for a lot of people that is what they see when they open their LinkedIn. Yeah, and I think that we're really seeing a shift away from that. And I think the shift kind of started through through COVID, really, when um, obviously everyone's online habits changed a little bit and we spend a lot more time online. Um, but there's a real shift in terms of the type of content that people are enjoying on LinkedIn. And it's moved away from just the typical, you know, templated po post, I have a new job or, you know, I'd like celebrate my work anniversary or something like that um, and now you're seeing people that are sharing a lot more into their I would say we're um I'm, I was going to say personal lives but I feel like there's this real sort of blur now between our personal life and our work life and in the past we used to talk a lot about work-life balance and how you'd have you know um, strategies where you'd split your business and your personal but now we're seeing a real sort of blurring and lots of people working from home and you know it makes more sense um, that we share some content that might not be traditional sort of business content uh, and people really are enjoying that as well um, another thing we saw roll out with LinkedIn is a new reaction so in the same way that we can react to post on Facebook and we can give them a thumbs up or a heart or an angry face we saw a new reaction roll out on LinkedIn a while ago which was a laughing face which is 
sort of shows you the way that LinkedIn content is going. So we don't have to be all, you know, professional and, um, you know, very sort of straight face. We can now have a bit of a laugh over on LinkedIn. And I know that's a bit of a tongue in cheek sort of way to interpret that. Um, but I definitely see it in my own feed is there's a lot more humor. There's a lot more personal content. There's a lot more, um, you know, content that sort of blurs the lines between professional and personal. Yeah, I love that. And I think it also really depends on who you follow on the platform. Like if you just follow all of these lurkers that we just mentioned before, then yeah, you're probably going to see really old posts and it's going to be a lot of, I have been working at this company for five years and everyone, great, that's so cool. That Those kind of posts that are like nice, but also like, will I open my app to see that kind of content? Mm, probably not. So I think it also really depends on like how you curate your feed and that's true for every social media platform because I also hear lots of people who don't enjoy TikTok or they don't enjoy Instagram because they haven't really either taught the algorithm what they like on the platform or they just aren't connecting with the right people on there and that's why their experience is a very different one to someone who does make an effort to curate and connect with people who they're interested in so I think that makes a big difference as well. But I love what you said about being more casual, being more fun, because I don't know, I feel like we're just moving away from this whole stiff corporate way of working. And of course, it it still will always be there, but we're moving away from that and we're moving more into having casual conversations with people, getting to know the people behind the job maybe a little bit as well. And that is what LinkedIn is really great for, to show who you are aside from the job title that you might have and who the person behind that job title is. Yeah, and I think we're seeing in the in the social media world, we are seeing this sort of shift into um, what we call in-house influencers. So in the past, you know, you would go to a, a, an influencer who had built up an audience um, and you would pay them to post their audience and, you know, promote your product or your service. But what we're seeing now is companies are realizing that they actually have a whole team of influencers, you know, within their organization. So if they empower those um, teams members to share in their own social media content, you know, company content, but in a way that's personal to them, then we're seeing sort of, um, you know, this real shift. And I see it a lot on LinkedIn where, you know, it may be the marketing manager or the operations manager, or, you know, it doesn't typically have to be a director or a CEO anymore, but they're actually sharing some information about, you know, what they do in their professional world and behind the scenes and, you know, things that they've got going on in their lives. And it's just such a cool way to connect with a company because if we think about the way that LinkedIn was developed and we go right back to that sort of core about connecting people with potential employers and how that sort of evolved, LinkedIn was never designed to connect you with a company. So while we can create a company page on LinkedIn, we're never going to get the kind of traction with a company page and sharing company content that we can when we share our own personal content. So if you think about that from a, a company perspective where you have a team, if you can get your whole team empowered and excited about sharing content about your company through their own personal networks on LinkedIn, you suddenly have this whole team of brand ambassadors or you know influencers that are out there talking about the company and really connecting with people. So I think that's such a massive opportunity for those that do have teams. And we often think as individuals, like I work alone, um, you know, it's much easier for me because I am my brand and I can get on LinkedIn and I can talk about me and my business and it's all very easy but I don't have a team so if you think about your team as 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 brand ambassadors why not give them the power to get out there and share some content yeah I love that approach because I have seen it done wrong as well <laughs> you know when you have a few people as connections on LinkedIn and they work for the same company and then you can just guess that the marketing team sent out an email to everyone saying, oh, we're launching this new product. Can you please share it on your LinkedIn? And everyone has the same kind of blurb that is just like slightly personalized to their own account, but it's all kind of the same. And you're just like, yep, I just know you didn't write that yourself. And it was just, you know, kind of like, everyone, you're going to post this on LinkedIn right now because it's important. Um, I think that there's a massive difference between that and what you mentioned with being a brand ambassador and sharing your life, your work, and at the same time, 
promoting that employer, saying it's a great place to work at. This is what you can expect if you work for this company and kind of paint a picture for someone who might be interested in working with that company. Yeah, and LinkedIn even has a really cool tool now to help you with this. So when you post something to your company page, there's a little tool now that lets you notify employees. And so what that means is as long as when someone has set up their LinkedIn account, they've linked back to that company page as their company, so where they work, um, that notification will go out to everyone who's connected to that page. So what that means is it gives them a gentle nudge to say, hey, there's a new post on the company page, why don't you share it? So then we can, um, the way I see it and the way I teach it is that we have our company page as our hub, and that's where we um, post our content, and then we think of our team as the spokes, you know, on a wheel. So they're the ones that share that post, but the key here is to add their own context add their own spin to it so that it doesn't become that kind of repetitive copy and paste you know that you're just a, a mouthpiece for the company message instead you actually say why this is meaningful to you or how you were involved in the project or how you see this initiative or you know put your own personal spin on it but it's just interesting that LinkedIn now has that built into its own features. Yeah, that's a really good feature because that kind of eliminates the need for a marketing team to send out that email like, hey, we've added a new post. <laughs> so it makes the, the marketing teams work a lot easier as well. I was going to ask you about features um, because obviously, like you said, we can have a company page, we can have our own uh, personal page. And I think that's probably what most people are aware of. But are there any other underrated, underused features that people might not be aware of when it comes to LinkedIn? Yeah, so LinkedIn rolled out this thing called creator mode a little while ago. Uh, and the way that that works is it basically turns your personal profile into a little bit more of a, um, s more similar to a, I'd like to think of it like a Facebook business page. So with a Facebook business page, people can follow you, you know, you push content out, you share it with your audience. So when you switch on this creator mode, basically your profile has a couple of tweaks to it. Um, and the main one is that it turns your main button on your profile from connect to follow. So what that means instead of requesting to connect with you, which is a two-way street, so someone reaches out and says, you know, do you want to connect? And you have to say, yes, I want to connect. And it's all a bit awkward because you can't remember who they are or <laughs> yeah. maybe you don't even want to ask them to connect because you think they're probably not going to know who I am or it's going to be awkward. Um, instead, it gives you this nice big follow button. So it means that someone can follow your content. Um, they can see what you're up to, keep up to date with your posts and your content that you're sharing, but they don't have to have that awkward sort of back and forth there. So I think switching to creator mode is a really good um, little tip there. Um, the other thing it does is it highlights some of your content. So when you scroll down a profile, typically what you see is um, you know a bit of a summary about someone, then you might see their work experience. So when you switch to creator mode, mode it reorders things and it prioritizes your content so there's this section here we you know um, you can highlight some of your content and I think that that's um, you know a really good way to start to shift your your profile away from the typical profile to more of a thought leader um, business leader authority sort of um, profile the other thing that I think is really underrated on LinkedIn is articles so LinkedIn articles are just a way of sharing content so um, instead of creating a post where we would have an image or a video and a caption what we do is we create a, a, an article an article is often similar to a blog post it's that longer sort of format content we can put images in it we can put links in it we can put all sorts of things in there format it um, but the cool thing about LinkedIn articles is number one they rank really highly in Google search results so if you're talking about a particular topic that you know inside and out and then someone does a Google search for something to do with that topic chances are they can find your Google, uh, sorry, your LinkedIn article. Um, the other thing about LinkedIn articles is they have a much, much longer lifespan as well. Um, they, um, you know, people can find them, they can comment on them just like they do with other social media posts. So I think that a lot of people kind of sleep on articles, like it's just such an easy way to increase your reach. Um, what else would I say in terms of features? I mean, features that I don't see people using a lot is LinkedIn Live. So when you 
to your creator mode, um, you can access a few different features. And one of those is live videos on LinkedIn. Now, I don't see many people in my network using them at all. Um, in fact, I can only think of probably two or three this year that I've seen pop up with, um, and one of them was, um, I think it was Xero, um, the accounting software. So they did a LinkedIn live. But I think that would be quite a cool feature if you're into that sort of live um, video format. Um, but yeah, there's lots and lots of things on LinkedIn. It's just about diving in, having a bit of a play. Um, yeah, I think that creator mode, though, would be the very first thing I would recommend everyone do. Jump onto their profile, scroll down until they see the, the little creator mode option and switch that on. Have a read through and see what all the different features are that you get access to. I also switched to creator mode maybe a year ago or something, because I wanted to avoid having these awkward situations when people request to follow you. And I find you can also grow your audience much quicker if you are in creator mode, especially because you don't have this like, uh, I have to request like their friendship almost like on Facebook when, you know, we all, all had these situations when you get a friend request or a connection request and you're just like, who is that person or like, oh, I don't want them to see my content. So now they can just follow and I won't be aware <laughs> that they are there and that's fine. <laughs> they can follow me. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a good tool um, to grow as well. I would maybe also add groups because I don't think a lot of people are aware that there are groups and I have to confess that I don't really use them a lot either. I have been in a few groups, but I often find that they are a little bit, you know, <laughs> not as high quality as you would want them to be. You know, there's lots of, oh, I'm launching this service or I have this new product kind of posts in there. So I think, again, you have to curate your experience and you have to do a bit of, make a bit of an effort to find the right groups for you if you want to leverage them. But if you find a really good one, and especially if it's um, one that, where there's lots of people in your niche, I think that can be a really good tool to use as well to to connect with other people and to to build your authority as well. Yeah, groups are tricky because I think we're all used to Facebook groups where people on average here in New Zealand we log into Facebook on average eight times a day, whereas LinkedIn we might be logging in once a week, once a fortnight. So we're not going to have that same volume of content. It's not going to be active like your local community Facebook group, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that's the tricky things is that groups are often quite slow, um, you know, they don't have that volume of activity. But the cool thing about groups is that when you join a group, uh, LinkedIn treats your fellow group members like a connection. So it seems that you're all in this group together and so um, it, it assumes that you have something in common. So the cool thing about that is that you can then message people who are in that group privately through LinkedIn messaging, so send them a private message and um, without having to be connected with them. So if you were in a, um, let's say, for example, you wanted to do some, um, you know, sort of, oh, I, I liken it to cold calling, but maybe you wanted to reach out to some potential clients or some potential, you know, customers, you could use that as a tactic. So you could figure out where your target audience is hanging out, join that group, and then that opens up that channel. Now, I don't always recommend that, you know, cold messaging people is a great way to spend your time. Um, I think there's some other tactics we can use to grow your business. Um, but if you're in that sort of, maybe you're in a sales role or a business development role, and maybe you do need to get in touch with all the, I don't know, health and safety professionals in New Zealand. So you go and draw, join the health and safety professionals of New Zealand Facebook group, oh, sorry, LinkedIn group. <laughs> and then once you're in there, you, it opens that ability up to message them. Um, so that's one little feature that people don't actually realize. Yeah, I think with, with all of these strategies, obviously it needs to fit your business and your overall strategy. But I think it's just important that we are aware that they exist and and be like oh I never thought I could do that or you know just it opens up a lot of um, new possibilities let's talk a little bit about content because we've we've touched on that before but what would you say what type of content or what yeah what topics do really well on LinkedIn what what's something that you see do well on there 
Yeah, so I think the same with any sort of social media content is anything that draws on uh, people's ability to feel seen, to feel connected. You know, often when we are a little bit more vulnerable in our content and we might share some challenges that we have, um, people really resonate with that. Um, Also on the other side of that is when we have wins or we have successes in business. You know, there are people over on LinkedIn that are really keen to cheer you on. And that I don't mean the, you know, I survived five years in this job type content. (laughs) When you have um, some hits and milestones in your business or there's something that you're wanting to celebrate, um, you'll often find there's lots of cheerleaders leaders over there on LinkedIn that want to cheer you on. Um, But then, of course, there's the knowledge piece as well. So if you want to share information about um, your industry or how you work with clients or customers, your products, that sort of thing, I think that there's a lot to be said for still that educational type content. The tricky thing with that content is that, again, we need to think about those lurkers. So people will be consuming your content. They'll be reading it. They might be taking it in. They might even be searching it out. So they might see that post a long time after you've written it because they're doing a search on that topic that you talked about. Um, But often it doesn't get a lot of engagement. So sometimes we post that type of content and then we feel like, oh, you know, people didn't enjoy that. They didn't engage with it. But there's a place for all different types of content. And it comes back to what you said a minute ago about strategy and thinking about the bigger picture. Not every piece of content is designed to get massive engagement. So we have to have a balance with our content um, in terms of our content plan. Um, but I think yeah being vulnerable anything like that which can be really difficult for business owners I mean we don't want to share when we're having a crappy day or we've had a challenge you know we want to put that facade on and be like wow you know I'm so successful and business is great and you know sometimes if we break down that that wall a little bit and we let people in that's where we can have some really good connections Um, but yeah I think that anything that's maybe a little bit more personable relatable um, share Sharing a bit more about your personality as well. Uh, I think again with business owners, we fall into this trap where we we want our business to appeal to the biggest audience possible because we think that more people means more money in our business but then our marketing and our messaging becomes very bland if we're trying to keep everyone happy um, you know it's going to it's going to be a very sort of bland message so if we remember with our marketing that good marketing either attracts you know, our ideal customer or repels those that don't fit with us. So if we can get a little bit more personal and share maybe more about our values or things that are important to us, then yeah, we are going to repel some people. People are going to, you know, perhaps disagree with us. Um, But those who fit into our target audience and who align with our values, we're just going to deepen those connections there. So I think it's less about um, that sort of professional corporate, you know, we've got to be very careful in what we say. And actually, you know, if, if swearing in your business is what your business is about, then don't be afraid to swear on LinkedIn. You know, like there's nothing worse than um, trying to be something you're not and then maybe connecting with a client and then when you start working together you actually realize that this isn't a good fit at all you know I'm not the right person for you so if we can get through that with our marketing and our messaging on LinkedIn I think that that's a good way to approach it. Mm, I think this is true for all social media platforms because I can't imagine anything worse than meeting someone that you've connected with online and they're just a completely different person in real life because they've built this online personality and then you meet them in real life and you're just like, (laughs) sorry, but (laughs) this is not the person I met online. So I think that's really important, especially for service providers, because one of the main reasons why we want to work with a service provider is because of their personality or because we feel like we are a good fit in terms of character or maybe values, like you mentioned. So I think lots of people, especially in that like more professional setting, are afraid of sharing who they really are, sharing their real uh, thoughts and and, and values because they're afraid that they might not look as professional, especially on LinkedIn, because obviously, you know, it's a more professional social media network and we need to share our successes and show how how great our business is. And I think it's a really um, nice thing to actually let people in a little bit and show them what's really going on you obviously don't have to share I don't know all of your super personal details on there but I think there is um, a really big uh, demand for that kind of raw content more 
real, I don't really like the word authentic, but you know, that is what it is. More showing what's really going on, showing your thought processes, the, the challenges that you have rather than just being like, we launched another product and we had a six figure launch and whatever, because we already see that way too much on other social media platforms. So I really like that, that development towards um, more personal, authentic content. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny because, yeah, you're right. We should do that on all social media platforms. But for some reason, when it comes to LinkedIn, we all just get a little bit nervous about sharing that sort of stuff. It's like we need to put on this really professional front. Um, but the content that I see that does really well in terms of active engagement and reach is always the staff where people are a little bit more, um, or sorry, a little bit less professional and maybe a little bit more real a little bit more authentic I don't have an issue with that word but I do know that it's over you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I've noticed a similar trend if you if you want to call it that but talking about trends I actually wanted to ask you do you have any cool trends apart from maybe this going towards more authentic content that you have seen on LinkedIn recently that you're like this is cool we need more of that yeah I mean there's some that I like and some that I don't like um the trends that I really like are this uh, as I mentioned before that in-house influencer so seeing businesses really empower their staff and let them share more about you know um their their sort of um personal um perspectives of the business I think that that's a really Trend that I'm seeing a lot. Um, another trend which I love is this, um, I don't know, I haven't coined a term for it yet, but it's when you write a post, right, and, and you've really thought it through and you've written something and it may be vulnerable and it may be quite personal to you and you know that, that um, you know, people are going to resonate with that post, but then you think, oh, I don't have an image to go with it. So either you snap a quick selfie or you just do a quick scroll through your camera roll and you just think, oh, that'll do. Um, and I love that. I love seeing some really, and you did one recently where you're sitting on the couch and you've got your laptop on your lap and you took a quick selfie. And I thought, you know, like it, it doesn't necessarily, um, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily completely relevant to the post, but it's not irrelevant too. So say, for example, I was sharing about, um, you know, a launch I recently did and maybe I had some tech challenges. You know, I did a webinar and my webinar, you know, fell apart and it didn't work and people were waiting and they couldn't see me and it was a nightmare. You know, that sort of thing would resonate well because I'm sure that other people have been in that situation and they know how tech fails feel. Um, but rather than having um, some sort of like image of a webinar you know it might be just a quick snap of myself or it might be a quick you know like um selfie for example so it's not necessarily illustrating the post but it's still attention grabbing because if we think about the very first um, objective of any social media post is that it has to stop the scroll people have to stop scrolling and generally that's the image that's going to do that um, so anything we can just sort of snap as a quick um, image to go with it i think is really cool um, some of the trends that I don't love is this uh, kind of way that we structure posts where we have a very strong hook. So we have that sort of first sentence where it might be something that's really attention grabbing and, you know, it might be very vague or it could be quite polarizing and people stop on it. And then we put this huge space before we put our next line. And what that does is it means that people only see that hook and then they have to click to read more because everything else is, is truncated and hidden. And so what happens is when we click to read more, obviously that sends a signal to LinkedIn that we're interested in this content and it can help us see more content like that and it can help that post be pushed out to more people. Um, but I just feel like it's a little bit icky. It's like it's very obvious we kind of game the system where we're hiding the, you know, the, the explainer behind Behind that hook underneath that read more button so yeah a bit of a trend that I don't love. I totally agree with this read more one um, it's also usually the kind of captions or hooks that I don't really like on other social media platforms either you know they're like I could have made another million dollars this month but I chose not to and then you're like oh my god like what's that about or like I had to fire an employee or something or like really like you say polarizing or like I don't know and then usually the rest of the caption like explains what they really mean and you know it's usually not that 
crazy or not that wow. It's just they've spun it that way. It's a bit like clickbait on YouTube when, you know, they have the, the thumbnails that are super, uh, like, shocking or you're like, oh my god, what's happening now? And you have to click on it and I just don't really enjoy it on any social media platform when people try to... Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily say deceive you, but yeah, in a certain way it is like trying to make you click on that post and then it's not even that interesting. And you're just like, yeah, kind of <laughs> wasted my time here. And I say that it's a trend that I don't love, but if it works for you, like I, I hate putting people down. Like if you're going to give social media a go and you're going to share your content, then just go for it. Like, if it's working for you, go for it. Like, I, yeah, I personally don't use it in my business. Um, I still give some thought to my hook, though, so I'll still think about how I can get people's attention with that first line, um, but I definitely won't try and, you know, deceive people or, um, you know, mislead people. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a trend I don't love, but if it's working for you, hey, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what you mentioned before about the snapping a quick selfie this is literally what I did not yesterday but the day before <laughs> I was like in this exact situation I wrote a post I was like oh this is really cool to share I'm like what should I add as a photo because obviously we can just post text on LinkedIn but I have found that it does much you get much less reach much less engagement with just a text post because like you say it's obviously not as attention grabbing as when we have a photo of a person because that's just how our brains work we see another person like our attention is there so I was like ah, oh, I'm just gonna do a quick selfie and add that and yeah that's how that post came to be and I love it I absolutely love it I actually used you. I did a, a webinar recently on social media trends and I took a screenshot of one of your LinkedIn posts and used it as an example. So there we go. <laughs> I hope it was a good one. Now I'm thinking about all the recent LinkedIn posts I did. I'm like, <laughs> which one is it? it? Was, Hopefully it not. <laughs> you look okay, lovely. Then, I, then I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about organic LinkedIn marketing, sort of kind of post that we're doing, but we can also advertise on LinkedIn, right? It's not really something that I have ever looked into. I know lots of people use it to advertise jobs if they're looking for new team members, but talk us through how we can use advertisement on LinkedIn. Yeah, so there's lots of different ways that we can advertise on LinkedIn. I think if we think about it um, in a similar way to, to uh, say, Facebook and Instagram, because most people have um, if not created an ad campaign, they've hit that boost button. Um, so LinkedIn has that same functionality where you can sponsor a post and push it out to more people. Um, the cool thing about LinkedIn is obviously uh, you cannot set up a LinkedIn profile without having some kind of job title or industry. So if we want to target people based on their job title or the industry, then LinkedIn knows exactly who we're looking for. So in terms of targeting, particularly in that B2B space or, or when we know who our target audience is from that perspective, LinkedIn is fantastic. You know, over on Facebook, of course, you can put in what your job is on your profile, um, but most people will just come up with their own title or they will misspell it or, you know, or they don't even bother in their job title. So we can't do that same, um, you know, a, targeting in that way on Facebook doesn't work quite so well. The tricky thing we have with LinkedIn advertising is that we don't have that same volume of activity. So where people are in and out of Facebook all day long, uh, as I said earlier, they may, might log into LinkedIn once, you know, once a week, for example. So say we are running an ad on LinkedIn and we know that our target audience is probably going to be once, you know, logged in once a week. We need to run that ad for such a long period of time to get people to see that ad enough times to actually take action on it. So say, for example, we want someone to see that ad, say, three or four times. We know at a minimum we're going to have to run that ad for a month. So straight away, the tricky thing is we have number one is often people want to advertise things that are timely. So it may be a workshop or a webinar that's coming up um, and, you know, they've got a limited period of time for that promotional um, advertising campaign. The other thing is the budget aspect. 
So with LinkedIn, you're looking at a minimum of $15 New Zealand per day for your advertising, whereas over on you know, Facebook, Instagram, we can we could do $2 a day, you know. Um, but if we know we have to advertise for at least a month, we're going to be charged $15 per day. If you're in New Zealand, they add GST on top of that. Um, and then also they factor in that if your ad is running well, that they might spend an extra 20% to get you the best results. So if we start to break it down in terms of cost, we need a much, much bigger um, advertising budget to advertise on LinkedIn. But yeah, as I said, there's different ways we can advertise. So the sponsored post or that sort of um, feed advertising is one way. Another way we can advertise is through what we call in-mail. So in-mail is where we send a message, a direct message to someone. So again, we might pick all of the, let's say we want to target all of the social media managers in New Zealand and we want to send them a direct message and we would write our message and send that through. Usually it has a link through to a website or a, a web page we want to send them to. Um, but often what I find is that people just uh, completely ignore these messages and you've probably got them in your inbox. Um, the only time that I find that they work really well is for promoting um, events or conferences, that sort of thing. So um, that can work well because sometimes you are interested to have a look at what conference is coming up. Um, and then the other way is, of course, uh, jobs. So if you have a particular job that you want to fill, um, you can actually um, run an ad where people who are looking for that particular type of work get an alert. So they actually get an alert, and depending on their settings, they may get an email as well um, to say that there's a particular job in their field or their industry um, that might be a good fit for them. So lots of different ways that we can advertise, um, but just understand that you're going to spend more than when you spend your 10 or 20 bucks boosting a post over on Facebook. It's not at all the same um, you know, a approach to advertising. Yeah, and I guess it also depends on the type of ad you want to run. If you say it's for a job, for example, you might be willing to spend more money on that because you really want to find the right person. Whereas if you're promoting an event, you might be better off doing that on Facebook because like you say, the cost might be a little bit lower and you don't have to run it for as long as you would have to on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I think um, with LinkedIn advertising, if you do a scroll through your own feed and have a look at the types of businesses that ads are popping up for you, you'll, you won't see very many one-man band, small business. What you'll see is the likes of, you know, big companies, Salesforce, CRMs, you know, that have that big advertising budget. I mean, obviously, depending on um, your industry. So I get hit with a lot of CRMs and, you know, um, marketing software and tools because that's the industry that I'm in. But if you have a look at them and you think, okay, the size of their company, you can probably assume the size of their advertising budget. You know, you don't see your local um, you know, accounting firm, you know, running an ad over on LinkedIn because of that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. That's, um, I always get an ad for, I don't, I don't even know what it is, but I've seen it lots of times. It's like a credit card that you can use then, you know, like for flights and stuff like that. But it has this very masculine vibe to it. And I'm like, why the hell am I seeing this ad over and over again? <laughs> and I know that I have clicked it away multiple times already and said, I don't want to see it anymore, but it just keeps popping up. Um, so yeah, um, like you said, the targeting is a little bit different <laughs> than what it is on Facebook. Now that we've said maybe advertising as a small business isn't necessarily the way to go unless you have a really healthy budget, do we want to focus on posting organically? What is one last tip that you have for small business owners on how to grow their business through LinkedIn? Yeah, so I guess my last tip would be around confidence. So the thing that I hear over and over again around posting on LinkedIn is that people feel really nervous about saying the wrong thing. They think about all the professional connections and it may even be that you're still connected to past managers or bosses and you still feel almost you know like they're, they're in charge of you sort of feeling and you feel like oh if I post something they're going to be looking at me and saying who who does she think she is or you know um, but it just doesn't work like that people are more likely to look at your content and say oh my gosh look at her posting I should be posting and I should be doing that and I wish I had the confidence to do that um, so my last tip would be just do it just give it a go try and break through that sort of fear um, 
everyone feels it and it's just such a common and you would know from working with your clients as well that they'll often feel, particularly on LinkedIn you know social media posting is scary on any platform putting ourselves out there but LinkedIn it just seems to be that little bit um, yeah a little bit scarier um, I would love to see lots more women over there like I feel like a lot of the content dominated by um, the male population um, but I, I'd love to see more women in business more women in leadership roles more um, you know female professionals out there sharing content and really having their voices elevated so just feel the fear push share anyway give it a go and just see what happens and if you need me to be your cheerleader um, send me the post tag me in it I would love to come and cheer you on I'll always be the first one to give you a thumbs up and a comment um, if you need that engagement so just give it a go <laughs> that is a perfect place to wrap it up I love it and uh, this is a great tip and I, ca I can only agree just do it give it a try and you can only build that confidence by giving it a go seeing how how things go and you'll, you'll see it's not as scary as you might think it is thank you so much for coming on the podcast it was great we could have probably talked another hour <laughs> about social media and linkedin and all the things that we usually chat about but obviously yeah we, we will have to keep it to to a shorter ish episode <laughs> thank you so much for having me it's been so fun